we know for a fact that our technology and our ability to remote work has, has enabled us to have someone employed to any part of the country and still do a really good job. Hello everyone, I'm Adam Turton and welcome to Elite Chat. In each of our episodes, I'm joined by guest speakers as we explore the impact of emerging trends and dive into the different challenges facing businesses today. Our hope is that we can bring you some value on your journey in business by sharing the knowledge and practical experiences of our guests who have operated and executed successfully in business. Today, we will be diving into the world of hybrid working, something that every business is wrestling with right now. Certainly, this is the case in the UK, where we've seen COVID-19 restrictions lifted following the continued successful rollout of the vaccine. Joining me today to explore the do's and don'ts of hybrid working is Laura Williams and Greg Voller. Laura Williams is the Head of Human Resources at Elite Group, with more than 19 years experience in HR, working in education as well as tech. Laura brings a wealth of knowledge and experience in both strategic and operational HR. Greg is the technology director at Elite Group with a proven track record of success within B2B, outsourced technical services and consultancy within the SME and corporate markets. Greg brings great insight into the successful execution of digital transformation programs with more than 20 years experience of operating in the tech sector. Welcome, Laura and Greg, to Elite Chat. How are you both? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Very good. Let's dive straight in. So, look, as, as you both are aware, COVID-19 has forced remote work at scale and accelerated digital transformation for all businesses across the globe. More than a year on now, following the rollout of the vaccine, we are seeing restrictions lift and a return to work the workplace in a number of of markets. Just today, I read earlier, uh, the accountancy firm EY announced that they will be joining the other big accountancy firms with a permanent move to hybrid working in June. So certainly hybrid working is something that many businesses will be wrestling with right now. But in your personal opinion, how beneficial is it for a company to offer hybrid working? Laura, coming to you first, please. I think the, the obvious benefit is work-life balance. For the past year we've been 100% remote working and we've had a different type of working environment than we've ever had before. We've had a lot more work-life balance and we've come to, to get used to that. So um, to move into a more hybrid approach, a flexible working approach would be very beneficial for us. And we know that um, research shows that um, working from home in a work-life balance produces better productivity in, in our employees, better motivation, more commitment and loyalty, because if you can have it all, then you're more likely to stay and be motivated working for that organisation. So that, that's the main benefit, I think, work-life balance. It has to work for the business, but we can see the benefits ourselves from the past year. Absolutely. I'm in complete agreement there with what you've, what you've raised, Laura. Greg, in your opinion... How beneficial is it for a company to offer hybrid working? So, uh, as Laura said, that work-life balance is key. Um, historically, take myself, I would be getting on a train to London early in the morning, not seeing the kids, not having breakfast with them since being based back at home. I would take them to school in the morning and still be at my computer probably earlier than I would have been uh, travelling in a, over a long distance. But also going down the hybrid working allows us to look at a wider talent pool for new recruits as well. So rather than just finding the right candidate in that location, you can now find the right candidate from anywhere in the country. Yeah, absolutely. And I think thinking about businesses who are considering adopting a hybrid working model, Laura, how can a business determine whether hybrid working is suitable for them and their employees? I think, well, from Elite's point of view, from the last year, we'll know whether or not it worked for us and how well it worked and how well it worked in different roles and different teams. So we need to look at what's worked in the past 12 months and what hasn't, and then determine which roles will be suitable for hybrid working from that point. So the business success has got to be our number one priority. And then we take it from there, what we can do with different roles. And there's lots of different ways we can be flexible as well. We don't just have to say, you're up full-time working from the office at all, full-time working from home. We can look at what we can do in between that as well. So we can be agile and flexible in lots of different ways. And Greg, what key factors regarding IT and technology 
what businesses need to analyze when deciding if hybrid working is right for them or not? So it's the, the re review of the business systems, the uh, voice platform that the business is using, the IT systems that they use. Um, the critical bit is how staff access those systems and reviewing the security of the endpoints that they're accessing it from, as well as the data and how that's managed. Um, last thing that a business needs is to have data local on machines, not being managed, not being backed up. I'm thinking specifically about employees then now. Um, and Laura, I guess in your role as head of human resources, coming to you first on this one, how can you effectively take into account the opinions of employees regarding remote and hybrid working whilst also prioritising the success of the company? The success of the company, I think, has got to come first because we need to make this organisation, our business, a success. That's why we're all here. You know, that's why we've got a job. So we've got to take that as our priority and then consider what employees want. So at Elite, we surveyed our employees and we asked them, what do you want? You know, what's going to work for you when we're, we're in a position where we can start returning to work? What would suit you? And overwhelmingly, most of our employees said they would like hybrid work and they'd like to work part of the time from the office and some of the time from home as well. So at that point, then we need to look at individual teams, individual roles and see what works for those. Um, taking into account what our employees in each individual case is saying to us and seeing what flexibility is available. It's not an overnight fix. We're going to have to spend some time looking into this and seeing what's, what's right for us. Always taking into account that you know, we're here to make a lead to success and we're here, here to do a job. So how best are we going to do that? And if our employees are saying that we're going to do that best by hybrid working, then we certainly have to take that into account and think about how we're going to make that work for us. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's that's something that businesses are going to, I think, really wrestle with. It will be a change, a change in managing and setting expectations with employees because so many employees will be used to working now in a remote working setting and then, resetting expectations mm -hmm. that your role may now include some time in the office when people have been very much used to used to remote working. On the flip side of that, there might be a number of people who've been remote working for some time who can't wait to get back into the office. So it certainly isn't one size, it's all. It, it will be um, an interesting space to, to watch and learn from. Greg, from a technical point of view, what steps could be taken to ensure that employees have everything they need in order to seamlessly work from home and the office? So again, it's the, adopt the adoption of the business systems like virtual desktops. So it doesn't actually matter where you're located, you're accessing the system in the same way. Um, again, with hosted voice platforms, contact centers that allow you to connect via a mobile app or a soft phone or a physical phone so that employees have that flexibility wherever they're located, office, home-based, out on the road, they've got access to the same systems and have that standard way of working. Yeah, so it's very easy to say, isn't it, Greg, but more difficult to execute yes. across across several hundred employees. Um, you, re you touched on it before, uh, Greg, in terms of having, I guess, access to a wider talent pool as one of the benefits that having a hybrid working model brings to any organisation. So, Laura, I was going to ask you, what impact have you seen? And do you believe that hybrid working has on recruitment specifically? I think, well, absolutely. Geographically, we open up the, the, the talent pool and then we can we can fish in a larger pool. We can have a more diverse workforce if we're attracting talent from a, a, a wider geographical area. But if we're offering flexible working arrangements, we will also attract more people to the company because more people will think, well, I'd like to work in a in an environment where it's flexible, where I can have work-life balance, that's a big benefit to me. So we'll also attract um, more talent than we might if we say it's 100% office-based work and these are the offices that we've got available to you. Um, I, think this, I think this is something that's opened my eyes massively. Um, recruitment, I might be quite traditional in me thinking, but before, before we adopted remote working at scale in this business, I, was, I definitely went more into recruiting people who I could have office-based who I could see and work more closely with each and every day. Um, and then really technology has been the enabler of remote working for us at scale. So without the adoption of all the technology platforms that Greg, you and your teams have deployed for the business, we would not have been able to be productive 
and we'll be able to communicate and collaborate in a in a in an effective way as an organization and i know we'll come on to productivity and collaboration shortly but i think without adopting that technology at scale and seeing how effective we can work i probably wouldn't have been as open to recruiting people in remote working with remote working only anywhere in the country i'd want people based in a specific region or location where i have more access to them and laura i know you work with all areas of the, of the business supporting them with the recruitment have you seen a mindset change with management and leadership in terms of their willingness to recruit further afield now that we're we've been working in i guess predominantly a remote working setting and now a hybrid working setting absolutely there were some roles that we've recruited to in the past when we've had growth um even engineering roles where the, the fields-based roles we want them close to us so we can bring them in and we can have a relationship with them um, and there's always benefits to having people close so we can have that office-based activity. Um, but there's been a shift in the management um, view that we could employ somebody from any part of the country because we know for a fact that our technology and our ability to remote work has, has enabled us to have someone employed at any part of the country and still do a really good job. So, um, yeah, we've, we've actually had quite a few examples of that in the past few months where managers before have said, no, I've got to be nearby. And they said, no, actually, we look anywhere and we, we've um, made offers to people in the northeast, which we've never done before. Yeah. Um, because they, they can now work remotely and do the same work as they could if they were based in the office. And Greg, how could a company implement a successful IT induction with employees working remotely? I'm sure that's something you and your teams have had to wrestle with and adopt over the last year. Yeah, so planning and giving the IT team as much notice as possible is the key. Um, you know, get, getting the IT equipment. Oh, sorry, prepared. Greg, do, do you always get the notice that you require? It would be a, a quick no, follow-up question. <laughs> no, we don't. Um, so getting the IT equipment prepped and out to the end user is, is the key. Um, during the first lockdown, the IT team worked closely with the HR team to come up with a new starter hamper. So that contained all of the IT equipment, but also a few extra bits and pieces to welcome the new starters into the business. And then getting that out in advance of their start date and booking in that initial IT induction to make sure they're up and working before they then proceed into the rest of the HR induction. Yeah, and then... A question I wanted to ask you both, really, or a subject I wanted to cover under hybrid working was was productivity, which I'm sure is is a topic and a, it's a discussion point that we could probably spend hours on just in itself. And I think, um, yeah, this was the, the big realisation, I think, for a lot of people, certain, certainly me, that, yes, in a remote working setting, we can absolutely drive productivity successfully if you adopt the right technology to enable that. But thinking about um, our people, Laura, what, what is the best way to balance monitoring a hybrid team's productivity without, without micromanaging them? I'd always say communication is absolutely key. Keeping in touch, having one-to-ones, checking calls, making sure that your employees and your team members are doing okay, how are they feeling, noticing those little changes in the behaviours. Um, so keeping in touch and communication is definitely important. Uh, setting objectives to manage against so you know what's expected of you as an employee you know what you need to deliver and you just work to that plan um, and also consistency so if you're managing a bit of a hybrid team some people might be in the office some might be 100% remote workers then as a manager we need to manage all of our employees in exactly the same way be consistent no favorite favoritism for anybody who's in the office more often don't forget about the people that you don't see very often and we can also um, offer training for managers on how to manage hybrid teams. It's new to a lot of us. And it wasn't that easy to work 100% in the office one day and 100% at home and manage a team from home the next day with everything else that was going on with COVID. So at Elite, we've done some management training on how best to manage this and how best to keep in touch with our teams. But really keeping in touch, relationship building, communication, objectives and performance management um, you don't need to be on top of somebody and seeing what they're doing all the time if you've got all that in place and that's working and a strong management team and management skills will enable that. I guess while we're on productivity, I've got to ask, in your view, do you think 
when we deployed home working, which we did as most businesses did across the UK and the globe um, when COVID-19 first hit, do you think that productivity increased for the organisation as a result of adopting remote working? In lockdown one, definitely. I think everybody had all the time that they would normally commute back. So they would um, work that time, log on at the normal time that they'd leave for the office. We all seem to, maybe it was a novelty, but we all seemed to try really hard. We didn't know what was going on. So one thing that was a constant for us was the work was the same and it was there and we had to do it. So we tried really hard to to get on with our job. And that was one thing that was quite um, comforting, I suppose, that that was one thing that was stable for us. Um, since then, I'd say, no, we've probably had a drop in motivation and a drop in productivity because that, that that's no longer the case anymore. Personally, I feel a bit fed up now working from home. I've had enough. I've had enough of my office being at home. I like my office place and my workplace. And I've heard that from other people as well in my team and other people that I speak to and work that they're like, you know, the novelty is worn off. I'd like a bit more time with my employee, with my employees, my managers, my colleagues. I want some face-to-face time now, face-to-face meetings as well as working from home. So I'm sure everybody feels differently to each other. There's going to be lots of different views. But certainly productivity increased in lockdown one, but today's situation might be a little bit different for some people. Yeah, totally agree. I think that was probably my experience as well of lockdown one. Literally saw productivity go through the roof for probably the same reasons you've just talked about there, Laura. I mean, speaking personally, there was no longer a commute to and from work, so you were still awake at the same time. So you would have sat at, sat at your desk and, and you were getting cracking with your work. And then that I found it quite difficult to make the separation between work time and personal time when we adopted remote working at scale. Um, and I think a lot of people would have been going through the same the same thing. Hence, productivity just went, went up and up and up. But yeah, certainly over, over a year on, I call, I call it COVID trading fatigue. And I think, I think yeah, I think a lot of us have... have I'm tired of that experience of speaking to people as we are now, ironically, through a camera and, and through a screen and, and our welcoming an element certainly of hybrid working and getting back into an office, whether it's for collaboration or, or just team meetings, but a sense of face-to-face interaction with, with colleagues and employees, certainly for me and, and maybe for a lot of people is an, import, is an important part of the experience of being part of an organisation um, and working for a living. Greg, what was your experience of lockdown one from a productivity perspective do you think we were more productive as an organization yeah definitely (laughs) myself i've been a hybrid worker for a few years now but so i see it from a, a slightly different angle so having that home life work balance i could already see how the other people adopted what i saw a couple of years before but i was quite quickly into that fatigue. Um, I wanted to be back going up to the office every couple of weeks, which is how I used to operate. I used to be up up for a few days every other week. So got that good balance. And then I went straight back to not seeing anybody apart from via video calls, which, you know, that's something that a lot of firms have adapted and picked up during COVID and during the lockdown is to move across Microsoft Teams, it's no longer conference calls and just attending a meeting on the end of the phone and you don't see and feel the same interaction. But yeah, definitely there was, from my team's point of view, I saw a step up being remote, um, but then it has tailed off again at the other end. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon that loads of businesses will be having a similar experience. Let's talk a little bit about the technology, Greg especially given your role um, within our organisation and given your experience in the sector. After all, it is the technology that's enabled businesses to be productive and effective over the last year, which has been challenging for many. How can technology be used to measure the productivity of a hybrid working team? So there's tools out there where you can micro-monitor staff when they are remote, but actually the the best way of managing a hybrid team is exactly the same as managing an office-based team. The key is utilize the technology and the business systems 
to man manage the performance of the employees, not look at where their location is. So you know, look at the contact center statistics on live warboards, measure how many calls people are uh, taking based on their job, not based on their location. Um, you know, it, it's all about utilizing those business systems to track the K KPIs that you've set for the role, not for the location. So utilize business systems, the live dashboards, the um, reporting functionality, and then utilize systems like Microsoft Teams to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the staff, help them train, so monitor and help train up staff if they are struggling with that remote working element. But yeah, the key is manage the staff the same, whether or not they're office-based or remote-based. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, really good advice, Greg. Thank you. Then moving on to, I guess, company culture and communication, which is just massive. And I think we've kind of alluded to that in some of our sentiments in terms of our, our, ex, our experience around productivity being really high early on in lockdown one. Now towards the end, productivity has been more of a challenge and motivation levels have been more of a challenge of people just simply getting COVID trading fatigue of constantly being at the desk and engaging with colleagues through through digital tools like Microsoft Teams or Zoom or whatever it may be. So, Laura, coming to you first here, in your opinion, um, could hybrid working damage a company's culture? We've talked about some of the benefits of hybrid working. We've talked about what you might need to consider in adopting a hybrid working model. We've not really explored some of maybe the downfalls. So, yeah, do you think hybrid working could damage a company's culture? I think so, if you don't do it properly, if managers don't manage... Um, the remote workers in the right way. They don't treat people consistently and don't keep in touch, just forget about the remote workers. And also if we're not using the technology that's available to us, if we're relying on telephone calls or email to communicate with each other, it's not enough. We've, um, we've used Microsoft Teams throughout the whole of the lockdowns. Um, and I think that's been beneficial to us. So we've had all the face-to-face -face contact as much as we possibly could. If you're not using that sort of technology available to you, it'd be much more difficult to build the relationships you need to sustain a hybrid working approach or any sort of flexibility. So it could be damaging in the long run. Yeah, agreed. And you touched on the technology there. And Greg, what's, what steps can companies take in terms of IT and the technology that they deploy to ensure effective communication in the organisation? So Laura mentioned Microsoft Teams there. Yeah. That has been a game changer for lots of companies. You know, in the past, video conferencing was big multinational corporations. Um, Microsoft Teams has allowed businesses to interact properly. So those remote workers can take part in a meeting and actually get the feel for a meeting rather than just being a voice on the end of the speakerphone. Um, again, from a mentoring um, your employees, being able to do one-on-one -on -one video calls, being able to actually get the expression of what you're trying to say across. Body language is a, is a key to building relationships, whereas telephone calls, emails, you just don't get that personal touch. So you know, Microsoft Teams, I would recommend to a, any, any firm out there that is considering a, a hybrid workforce. Yeah, I completely agree. Absolute game changer uh, for all of us. Uh, Laura, um, how can a company ensure that their employees feel supported when working away from the office? I'll say it again, which I've said a couple of times, don't want to be too repetitive, but communication is absolutely key. Yeah. We've got to keep in touch. We've got to have one-to-ones, um, check-in calls. We do check-in calls every day with our remote workers. How are you doing? How are you getting on? Check on the well-being. It's not just about what work are you doing. Actually, how are you? How are you feeling? Because that's how we work, we build our relationships. We can offer training to managers on how to keep in touch with their remote workers and how to support remote workers. Um, treating remote workers fairly inconsistently alongside our um, office workers. And also to, um, to let our employees take responsibility for how they feel supported as well. So if they need the support, they, it's up to them to come to their manager as well and for them to maintain that relationship and them to maintain that level of 
um, communication. It doesn't just rest on the manager to do all of the communication. If you're a, a remote worker or a hybrid worker, then you have to maintain that relationship with the employee too. So I'd say it's a collaborative approach, but communication is definitely key. And managing performance is key as well. You know, someone's having a bit of a, a difficult time, then we need to put in that level of support. How can we help you? How can we help you improve? Rather than let anything snowball or get ignored. I'm thinking about individual employees, Laura, how should you determine which employees can be offered hybrid working? I'd say it's not about the employee, it's about the the role and the, the needs of the business. So um, if you can offer it as a business, then and it's going to make your business still successful or even improve the success of the business. Um, first look at that and then look at the role and whether that can be a role that can be um, performed remotely, so not in the office. If somebody has individual needs, then we've got policies that people can refer to, our employees can refer to, such as the flexible working policy, which is slightly different to what we're talking about, but there's lots of different ways we can look at how um, an employee can be um, flexible in their approach to work. And if we find that a role isn't appropriate for home working, you know, for whatever reason we see is the criteria for our business, then we can look at reduced working hours, or the flexible working options, and maybe even redeployment into a different role if there's one available. Um, but it, it'll always be about the role, the needs of the business, and then the employee as well. Yeah, it makes sense. And Greg, what risks regarding security and data management does hybrid work impose? Is it possible to avoid them? So, you know, from an IT manager's perspective, the data, the question that should always be at the forefront of their mind is where is my data being stored? Uh, reviewing how that data is stored, how it's backed up, how people authenticate to get gain access to that data. In a traditional office environment, the, the controls are there because the machines are in the office, the staff come into the office to access them. When you start going into the remote working, you've got access from anywhere basically being enabled. So authentication becomes the key there. So making sure you've got multi-factor authentication, um, authentication services that can be accessed from anywhere like as your AV. Um, and then alongside that, it's losing control of what's on those endpoints, the, the desktops, the mobile phones. So again, looking at what tool set can you use like Microsoft Endpoint Manager to take control of those devices, make sure your corporate policies are being applied and making sure that antivirus has been pushed out, the Windows updates are being pushed out to keep those endpoints secure because you don't want to add in any more backdoors into the corporate network. Yeah, and I did want to ask you about connectivity because I've lost count of the amount of Teams meetings I've been on where remote workers have complained about connectivity as an issue. And I bet this is a, a very real problem that businesses are, are wrestling with. What could a business do to ensure effective connectivity whilst hybrid working? Yeah, so connectivity is one of the most difficult items to contend with with remote workers because you know, you've got everything from poor Wi-Fi signals to the kids streaming Netflix while playing on the Xbox, <laughs> eating up all the bandwidth. So um, positioning of where your home office is, is is critical to getting the best out of your home broadband. But then what happens when that home broadband goes down? Having a, a team that's got a backup strategy for that so 4g dongles ready to be dispatched out to people because home broadbands don't have the same sort of slas as uh, business connections so it can take a lot longer to get re um, issues resolved um, but also looking at the systems that you're getting your staff to access so you want to make the systems as lightweight as possible so again if you went down something like the virtual desktop route the amount of data that's actually been transferred over those home broadbands is a lot less. So it becomes a lightweight connection that is required. So it does make life a lot easier when you get the business system right. That removes as much risk as you can from the connectivity. Now, when it comes to managing an IT department that's supporting hybrid users, office users, remote, remote working users, how can businesses successfully deal with IT issues that are happening both in the office and at home? So 
So the, the remote management and monitoring tools become key because one, the, the IT team can preempt any issues. They can spot a machine that's on its way out. They can spot where a service is starting to be content, um, congested. Um, but then the remote access elements of those tools to allow them to gain access to those remote machines. Again, historically traditional office environment, the IT um, engineer would get up and wander over and have a look at the machine. They can't do that when it's at, at the other end of the country. So remote access and the understanding of the employee that yes, it is going to take that a little bit longer to resolve because they are remote. But yeah, the, the understanding and the tool set again becomes the, the critical path there. Yeah. Um, I would like to say I've had a pretty good experience of remote IT support, which I've, I've needed quite often over the last year. And the reported root cause has always been user error. I'll have you know, but nonetheless, uh, I've had a good, a good customer experience. Uh, you both touched on, on policies throughout this, this episode. Laura, from a HR perspective, what policies need to be in place for successful hybrid working? I think we'd need to review all of our policies to make sure that they are encompassing hybrid workers as well as office based workers. But the obvious ones are health and safety, so the workplace assessment um, for a home worker, performance management, um, data protection, what are they doing with the data that they've got at home because we haven't got control over that. Um, we've got to manage expectations and tell our employees what we expect of them while they're working from home, if that's different to what we expect from an office worker. Um, maybe the flexible working policy um, and whether we are making contractual changes or making it a local um, arrangement for, you know, an interval period, you know, from now until, for example, for us June and then we'll relook at it in June to see what changes are going to be made to government legislation. Um, and certainly well-being, absence management, you know, we need to make sure that our employees are well at home because we're not seeing them in the same way. So checking up on the well-being, mental health, physical health. So I'd say quite a lot of our policies will be affected by whether or not our employees are working in an office remotely or hybrid arrangements. And Greg, from an IT perspective, what, what should businesses include in their IT policies for hybrid working to prevent, I don't know, misuse, damage, whatever it may be? So if the... The business systems are right. There shouldn't really be any difference in the IT policies from how an employee uses their equipment and the business applications, whether or not they're in the office or remote. Um, I'd say probably a reminder of laptop and internet usage. Um, if you wouldn't look at it while you're sat at your desk in the office, don't look at it on your corporate device at home. Um, but yeah, from, from an IT policy, the standard policies that are deployed through the business, if you've got your business systems right, there shouldn't be any difference between an office worker and a remote worker. Okay, understood. Thanks, thanks, Greg. We're nearly out of time now. So just some, some final thoughts, really, and just a, one more question each. So, so, Laura, what's the most important factor regarding employees, the businesses um, that they need to consider in order to implement successful hybrid working? If we're thinking about employees and not the needs of the business as such, I'd say for employees, we need to think about collaborative work and teamwork. It's not just the manager's responsibility to make hybrid working successful. It's our responsibility as an employee, if that's what we're going to do, to make that a success as well. So we work in the same way as we would, like Greg's just sort of alluded to as well. We work in the same way as we would in the office. We are motivated or we motivate ourselves in ways to make us as productive as we would normally be. We stay engaged with the organisation in the same way as we would if we were visiting the office every day. So I'd say collaboration and teamwork and an effort from everybody to make this a success um, because that's what we want. We know the benefits of it. So if we all put in the effort to make it, it work, then it will be a success. Thanks, Laura. And Greg, what's the key to success when it comes to using and managing IT whilst hybrid working? So I'd say get, get the correct systems in business systems in place. Uh, ensure the employees can securely access their applications and the data required to perform the role. And then the same from a manager's point of view, making sure that those systems allow them to track the performance of the employee as if they were actually office-based and not have to treat them separately. 
we are officially out of time. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Laura, for making the time to share your thoughts with us today. Hopefully this episode has brought you some value as you navigate the challenges associated with hybrid working. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment or question and we will be sure to reply. If today's episode did bring you some value, please do make the time to share this across your social media platforms of choice. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you.